just it says on the screen it's, it's showtime it's showtime it tells us <laughs> <laughs> welcome everybody we're uh, actually on the time on time on time yep amazing hmm. guess what i was on the telly <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hopefully some of you managed to catch uh, BBC last night. It was on fairly early though, wasn't it? Like 10 to 6. Yeah. Um, I was on the telly and we're going to talk about that and, uh, and the day filming and our trip to Scotland, which was where we filmed it. Um, we were going to possibly do a haul. Um, we were going to go out sourcing again today, but we had friends around last night and we, we, we partook in a few beverages. <laughs> And we, we woke up this morning and I went, no, <laughs> no. And, well, you're, and you're, you said, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning my life choices. And you said, go back to bed. <laughs> go back to bed. Because um, friends of ours very kindly bought us a bottle of champagne. And I, I had probably too much of that because I was drinking beer. So this morning when your alarm went off, I was like, no, we're not going to the jungle trail. Get back in bed. <laughs> Um, but we do have a haul from the day before, but because we have friends round, we tidied it all away. So it's all in the utility room. So we thought tonight we're just going to chill out with you lot and we're going to talk about filming, going to the BBC in Scotland and filming for the day. We, we also have a couple of other things to talk about quickly. Um, we'll say, so, yes, I know that Bronski beat is going to haunt me. Ellen's comment was something like, um, uh, I've got to find, see if it's still there. Well, not being able to get a fact out of my head that I know cost me a grand or two. Ellen said, I'm slightly... Shush, Jeff. She did say that. She said, I'm slightly bitter. You didn't get Bronski beat, but you did amazing anyway, so I'll let you off. <laughs> Which I thought was brilliant. Yeah. What are you doing, Jeff? It's being noisy. It's what he does best. Um, so anyway, we have a few things to cover before we start chatting about our exciting BBC stuff. Um, quickly, our, our good friend Lee, who you may know as Cola Flipper, has a great channel. Um, he's doing a fundraiser. He's walking 20 miles or kilometres, one or the other, um, for Marie Curie. Um, I have put all the links below. I put a post up on, on our YouTube as a post. Uh, but the links are below, um, so he is raising money for that. Great cause. If you can afford a couple of quid to go and support him, if you've ever benefited from Lee's videos and advice, um, maybe throw him a couple of pounds to, to show some support. So the links for all of that is below. We'll remind you at the end. I don't know if you're in, Lee. Um, hello if you are. And then we want to say hello to Marcus. Are you in, Marcus? Um, Marcus, you may have seen in our side chat, regular viewer for quite a while now, has moved local to us. So we got together and they were so kind to us, so generous. Yeah, Marcus and Rachel. Uh, Marcus and, and Rachel. Um, so we've got to know them now. That was really great to meet up. And yeah, you were beyond generous to us. So beyond thank you. generous. I have chocolate for months, <laughs> which is yes. amazing. Yes, yes. And yeah, we just, we had a lovely, lovely evening, didn't we? It was a really nice meal. It was um, lovely. Good company. And yeah. Yeah. So I think we'll be seeing more of Marcus and Rachel, hopefully. Um, I don't see them in the chat. Maybe they're not in tonight. Um, and then I had a, a surprise parcel arrive. Can you guess what it is yet? <laughs> well, you would never guess this. This is the coolest thing. This is a flexi disc. And it is an erasure flexi disc. This is so cool. This is recent. This isn't old. This is from the neon. Um, there's no note in here. I have no idea who has sent me this. I don't want to own up to it. But thank you. If you are watching, thank you so much. That is the coolest thing. It's a translucent flexi disc by erasure. Can't beat that. But then they also put in a Nick Berry. <laughs> <laughs> What was this number number three, four? I don't know where we're yeah, at. I think we might be at four. I think you got rid of one. We still have two. Every loser wins. I'm building a collection of these that I'm not sure what I'm going to do with. So um, thanks for the erasure. You didn't. You needn't bother with the Nick Berry. And then this. But you know, it's good for the collection because this isn't the the picture sleeve. So now you've got two that are different. 
whatever. <laughs> this is random as though. This is, I believe, from the Tele Addicts board game. I what? guess that's just to put with your spares, is it? I don't know, possibly. That's very random. But yeah, there was no note, so I have no idea who sent this. Are you in? <laughs> or it was just a good way of... Um, Stiffening you know, up the yeah. package. Maybe that's what that was for, just to get, stop that bending. Use them as placements. Although that's meant to bend. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, mystery sender of vinyl. We, have... we are expecting something from Ben. I've just seen him pop in, but we weren't in on Saturday because we were out of the jumble trail. Um, so yeah, we... we missed the parcel. We did indeed. Um Right, let's let's say a few hellos and then we'll talk about our adventures going up to Scotland and how that was and the filming and everything. Um, hey, everyone, interested to see what this is about? Well, I did explain it in the title. That's what it's about. <laughs> we, we went and filmed for a BBC TV show and it aired last night. If you've not watched it, it's on the iPlayer, so you can still go back and watch it if you want to. Um, hello, Maria. Um, Blondie's Maria came up in the show. It did. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that last week, didn't you? Um, Treasure Trove, evening all from Brizzle. Um, well, Tom is like a music encyclopedia. We've known Tom for quite a few years now, and he always gets there before me. A lot of the, a lot of the answers I would have got there, but not as quick as Tom. Yeah, but that's, this is it. I, if I went on it, I don't think I'd be that quick and I wouldn't do well. <laughs> I would, I'd be worried I wasn't quick enough on the buzzer. Yeah. I'd be worried that I just couldn't think quick enough. It's like when we listen to Popmaster and it goes, and if the three in ten today is, and it could be an artist, I know all of their records, but under pressure, mm. can I think of three in ten seconds? No. It's so true. Being under pressure messes with your mind. But um, the, you're right, though. I mean, Tom was so on it. There was only a couple of things that I got that Tom didn't through the whole show. <laughs> he probably could have won it on his own, to be fair. Well, I um, was saying, wasn't I, that I, I liked the way a lot of the time you would say the artist, Tom would then say the the song title. It was like you bounced off each other in that way mm, quite a lot. Um, yeah. You know, but he but, was flying through that top ten, wasn't he? Oh, he, 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 he was, was so brilliant. quick, so quick. The the one that I got on that that was the Travis, why does it always rain on me? So I, I was glad that I got one that Tom <laughs> didn't get in the, in the top ten. And then you both at exactly the same time got the Culture Club one. To finish it off, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The relief on your faces. Um, wow. But yeah, we were going to we were gonna chat about that in a minute. Let's say some hellos. Uh, Steve, hello. Peter, hello. Um, oh, look, it's that guy off the telly. <laughs> You'll be taking bids for autographs. Nah, nobody wants my It autograph. was funny. We went to take Jeff out in the village earlier and a couple passed us with their dog and we'd never spoken to them before. And he said, oh, you didn't get the 10 grand though, did you? <laughs> I, I put a post on my personal Facebook, which I don't really use anymore. It's the first post I put on there for possibly years. And I just put, you know, I'm going to be on the telly tonight. Blah, blah, blah. And I've had messages from people I haven't spoken to for decades about this. Um, people I know from back at art college days. Um, yeah, it's been nice, actually. Uh, most of our family watched it. You're getting messages from your side of the family, aren't you? Yeah, it's been good. Uh, good evening, uh, Nia and Belinda. Um, yeah, I know, Sunday again. Isn't it crazy? Hello, Fluffy Muffin and Helen, Damien's in. Um, hello, everyone. I always watch but rarely comment. My other half is once loved treasures. Okay. This is Christina. Just want to say, send a big congrats to Nick and Tom. Thank you. Um, There's once loved treasures. Yes, that is so weird, says Belinda. I, I kept thinking Nick should go on that show. <laughs> There's the other half. Hiya, wifey. Um, nice win. Thanks, Peter Ray, for letting me know that it was happening. Excellent. Cheers, Pete. Hello, Anne and John's in. So let's get down to the end. Uh, imagine my surprise seeing you on the BBC last night. A lot of people didn't see our social media posts 
and then message saying, is that you on the telly? <laughs> I've got a lot of them in my like mess in messages. Yeah. Um, recognize Nick on the iPlayer thumbnail. Excellent. Yeah, so let's get down to the end. Um, what's this? Your notification popped up as I'm sat in the Wagamama's in the south terminal of Gatwick on my way to Turkey. Oh, lovely. Awesome. Have fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, flipping Maggie. It was a great surprise seeing you on the hit list. Looks like Disney can be booked. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Right. Let's try and get to the end. Sorry if I've missed your comment comments um yes i had i shaved the beard off it was getting very big and gray had a haircut as well yeah, thank goodness um, it's a relief <laughs> so this is kind of what i looked like on the show all clean shaven yeah. um so let's start talking about it that that will bring us into it how long ago was the tv program filmed it was in march, march and we weren't allowed to talk about it hence <laughs> we weren't supposed to tell anyone, although I've, I've told quite a few people. You nearly gave it away as well. Um, <laughs> when, when we went live on the Sunday afterwards. Um, so we weren't really supposed oh, it to... it might have been the Monday because we got home on the Sunday, didn't we? We weren't really supposed to tell anyone that we were on it. We, we definitely weren't allowed to let it slip how we had done. Um, and we don't get any of the prize money until after it airs and they kind of hold that over you if you post on social media about this that and the other and what you won etc we can withhold your money uh, i don't know if they've paid it in yet no we might have to check the bank balance now and see <laughs> um so we've had to keep it this probably a won't go in until next week anyway. yeah i don't think they'll do anything at the weekend but never know it might have been a scheduled payment let's have a look um but yeah so i found it difficult not telling people how we did um on the show um but now we can openly talk about it because the show has aired i don't think the money's gone no. in there not yet we haven't not seen a penny yet. yet um but yes uh going back to the question it was filmed in march um we they paid for us to go up to scotland and and yeah, put you us you might up. remember there was a couple of social media posts <laughs> about our uh, trip to Scotland. <laughs> yeah, there was a round that we, we put on socials that we were in um, Glasgow and then we stopped off at Edinburgh. Um, and I think a couple of people suggested maybe we were up there doing something on the telly because we didn't explain why we were suddenly going off, off up there for the weekend. Um, yeah, so they, it, was, it was great because they, they paid us to go up on the train or they, they covered the expenses and we stayed in a nice hotel. Shelley's in. But on the, on the day, um, yeah, Tom's other half, Shelley and Andrea came with us, but they weren't allowed to view, to watch us do the filming. There was no studio audience. It was just the production crew uh, and the contestants up on the stage. Um, so you and Shelley were off gallivanting around yeah, Glasgow. We went by the charity shops. <laughs> And then we wound them up. When we came out, of course, Tom and I know knew that we had won. So Tom's on the phone to Shelley, like, um, yeah, we're, we're filmed, we're finished. And, and Shelley's like, so how did you do? Yeah, and like, we can't tell you. Not can't loud. tell you, not loud. I can't remember what Shelley said. Something like, well, once you've removed all your fingers and toes or something like yeah, that. I can't remember what you said. There Shelley. might have been some expletives <laughs> in it. Um, but that was cool. We were still just buzzing from the whole experience and then we went out and had a had a meal somewhere didn't we and a few drinks yeah and then carried on drinking into the <laughs> night <laughs> um but yeah the whole thing was really quite surreal um and also we follow diane buswell who does strictly and she was up there on the same day, I believe. Yeah, they were filming after you in the afternoon. Yeah. So I, we got chatting to the production people and they said, oh, Diane, we're filming the Strictly one. And I was like, oh, great. We might get to meet some of the people. We didn't in the end. But I've been so jealous, though, if you met the Diane as well. <laughs> yeah. But she had vlogged it because she has a YouTube channel. So we watched that a couple of days later. And she was sat basically in the same makeup chair because yeah. we had to have makeup done, which was weird. 
Um, and there she was, sat in the same chair with the same makeup artist, just chatting about appearing on the hit list, which was surreal, totally surreal. Oh, yeah, we went to a gallery too. We did. We did go to a gallery, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, Shelley. <laughs> yeah, we went to like a, it's a modern art gallery, wasn't it? It's Castle Galleries, I think, wasn't it? Mm. Oh, well, we, we went to Oh, that... then we went into, yes, 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 yes. That's what I think we're talking about. Over the road from that, yeah. Yeah, we went to a, a place so where they sell All pictures. I've got in my head is thinking about the, the Johnny Depp pictures that we all went to see. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so where was I? Yeah, so we had a, a, a kind of messy night in Glasgow at the end of that, didn't we? Yeah. And it was fun. And I've not really been able to talk about it since, <laughs> which isn't easy for me because I'm a blabbermouth. You are a blabbermouth. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so the experience of filming, what's interesting watching it back was we were there filming for a good couple of hours. Um, and they, of course, edit it into a show like the intros, for example, they chatted to Tom and I about different things. Um, I can't remember what we talked about, but there was when we applied, they try and get stories out of you to do with music and stuff. So Tom had stories about meeting Ed Sheeran and I had a story about meeting um, Kim Wilde and all of this. And those things were talked about in the, the pre-show interview, but they'd edited, edited that down to next to nothing. None of that was aired. Um, and then the second round as well, where we managed to get to 10 points really quick and the other two teams were fighting it out to see who could get there. That took forever. And of course they edited that down. So it looked like they every song they played one of the teams knew, but loads of songs played right through and they didn't have any idea. And Tom and I sat there just boogieing around for like half an hour or so, it felt like. Quite a bit of dad dancing was done. It was. Oh, some of the shots of me dancing were just <laughs> <You're> like... cringe. <laughs> but there was a moment when Depeche Mode came up. So Tom and I had qualified, got to the 10 points and were through round one. And we were just stood there while the other two teams were battling it out. And this Depeche Mode song came up and I'm like, and they didn't know it. They didn't even buzz in. They had no clue. So I'm like, they're going, please come to me. And so they said, oh, I think Nick might know this one. I'm like, oh, it's Dream On by Depeche Mode. And that didn't make the edit. I'm really so disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Shelley said they, they showed Tom socks though. <laughs> they did show Tom socks, but we had to go at the end. They had to film a separate bit because they didn't get it on camera. So they had to do this close up of Tom's feet. <laughs> so bizarre oh, yeah and then the final round i mean spoilers sorry if you haven't actually watched it yet um but the final ranks we got through to the final round and then my memory of that is so vague because yeah. the adrenaline's going and you're so focused and just like ah oh, what's happening watching it back was weird i don't remember half of the songs that played yeah well tom answered most of them tom got <laughs> I was carried through that for sure. Oh, but I got the Travis one. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's such, it was really surreal watching it back because we watched the show. We've been watching the show for, for years, as has Tom. Tom's a huge fan. Um, but watching it with me in it was odd. Yeah, it was, odd. it was quite surreal seeing you on it. It's kind of an out-of-body experience yeah. thing. It was a bit like a... Strange dream. <laughs> it was. And the, what they don't show as well is um, we managed to break our podium so that the, the front of it is a triangle, which is a screen that says Nick and Tom or whatever. But we broke that. Half of it half of it just wasn't showing anything. So we had to – engineers came out and were trying to fix it, et cetera. And the, behind – what you also don't see is that – our button was like gaffer taped on and behind it was just gaffer tape. And it was, was it gaffer all... taped before you started? Yeah, it was very haphazard. But we managed to break the, the podium. BBC budget for you. <laughs> yeah, but there was a lot of buzzing in to try and get the bonus points. And I think we might have been a bit heavy handed. So we broke the podium. Um, Will's got a question for you now. Oh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I it, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, can't read it on there. What are Rochelle and Marvin like? They seem really nice people. They genuinely were. Um, and they came over at the end because 
so it goes from three teams down to two and then down to one so by the time it was just us they they came over and had a bit of a chat and at the end they came and chatted and congratulated us and they were really lovely actually um yeah that was nice to have five minutes to chat to them at the end um yeah oh there's lee i don't know if you were in we shared we mentioned your fundraiser the links are below um, so as I was saying, if you've ever benefited from Lee's videos and you want to give something back, this is a prime opportunity. So go and chuck a couple of quid in the pot and best of luck with it, Lee. When is it? Is it soon? I can't remember when the date is that you're doing it. When are you doing it, Lee? The walk. I'll tell you in a minute. Yeah. Um, what's this one? Bet that was Tom who broke the button. Could well have been. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There was also an incident where they had given the point to one of the other teams and then someone up in the gallery said, actually, they haven't quite given it exactly right. And we had to, they messed around for ages and kept us stood on stage while they were messing about and messing about. And then we had to replay a song and that team had to buzz in again. And by this time, they'd had like 10 minutes to think about it and then they'd worked out the answer, I think. It was really odd. Uh, I think it was the Taylor Swift one. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, they'd not quite given the answer right, but they'd given the point, and then they went back on that, changed the points, rerun the question. So you don't see any of that because it's obviously edited out. Uh, Didn't they say? I thought she then said it correctly. He, like he said the wrong word, and then she said something. No, that was a different question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> there's Tom Nick doing his dad dancing yeah there's Tom <laughs> I didn't break the buzzer <laughs> maybe you did Tom but there was moments maybe it was both of you you were both like there was a couple of moments where I was trying to buzz in and, and I didn't manage to get in quick enough it was frustrating <laughs> um, but there were we still Bob saying Nick doing his dad dancing we were because we'd managed, as I said, we managed to get to 10 points quite quickly. So we could then relax while the other teams fought it out. So we were just chilling and chatting and, you know, singing along and dancing, looking very, <laughs> looking super cool, I might add. Well, you were a cool dude. I was a cool dude. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. Oh, a Tom says it was when they were moving the podiums three down to two. Was that when it broke? Oh, so it wasn't either of you then. Oh, maybe that's there it. There you okay. go. <laughs> um, I think there were some other comments further up. But yeah, I must say thank you to Tom because it was Tom who instigated yeah. the whole thing and, and did the application process. What made you pick trance? Anthems? Well, Tom did. <laughs> this was Tom's big idea. Tom, um, what made you choose trance? But well, actually, it was probably quite tactical because the other team didn't know anything. They knew even less about it so. than we did. Um, but the frustrating one was if I'd have really focused, I could have worked out that was Moby Go. In fact, as soon as they picked, I think it was number two out of four, I was like, oh, God, that's Moby. I bet that's Moby Go. And it was. So that was slightly annoying. Chilling, holding hands. <laughs> you did a lot of holding hands. <laughs> no, we were high-fiving. <laughs> what, we, what we were doing, I think you'll find. We did, there was a few very awkward high fives gone wrong. Oh dear, it's so funny to watch back. But yeah, the whole experience was was great and something that we'll never get to do again. So thank you, Tom. I know it you're was, watching. You were both so nervous about it, weren't you? So nervous. Yeah, it was a big build up because we're both big fans of the show, Tom in particular, to actually know that we were going to appear on it and then the build up to it. It was really intense. And by the time we got through to that final round, that was the most intense five minutes of my life. Properly was. Because in front of us, where you, you see us looking towards the cameras, but sort of behind that, there's a massive like 10 foot screen with your money counting down. Mm. So Marvin and Michelle were like, don't look at that. Look at us. You'll be fine. Trying to calm us down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go, Tom. Susan says, Tom's shirt was excellent. Nick's wasn't. <laughs> Yours was Primark special, wasn't it? It was. 
Well, the thing is, most of my T-shirts are like this with slogans on and they're like, you can't wear anything branded or with bands on or whatever. My T-shirts are all like Nintendo or bands or whatever. So I thought I'm just going to go buy a couple of (laughs) shirts. You said it was cold in there, didn't you? So it was really cold. It was cold in there. Yeah. Yeah, it's big, really high high ceiling studio space Mm. and it was chilly. Ah, yeah. You'll never forget Bronsky Beat, says Kathy. Oh, can't live that down. My chance, because I'm, you know, a fan of and know that song, Why? And I just, in the moment, I couldn't get Jimmy Somerville. I'm like, it's Jimmy the Somerville. Fact, the fact that you did Jimmy Somerville and Communards, but couldn't get to Bronsky Beat. Bronsky Beat. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, Tom says, I thought I didn't need my glasses because I could see the screen. But then when, when it was in quarters... I didn't spot Moby, but I got faithless at least. Yes, you're welcome. Um, yeah, we both, we'd worked out that was faithless, faithless, hadn't we? And then when I watched it back, it's so funny. I'm going, week on one. Uh, but I, I listed a couple of faithless Yeah, songs. and then Tom came in with I'm it. Like, I can't think DJ? of any more. And thankfully, Tom's like, God is the DJ. And we got there. Because I was like, what did I say? Insomnia, we come one. And then I just, that's it. I was, that was it. I was lost then. Yeah. Um, Thomas is asking, have we watched the Popmaster TV? Yes, we've been watching that. We've uh, only seen four episodes so far. So, <coughs> uh, we need to catch up. But yes, we have been watching that. <coughs> well, we've not seen the, the kind of finale of that week's episodes, have we? Because don't they do it in a week and then there's a final? The winner from each show goes yeah, through. Isn't there only just one week of it? I don't I think it might be just, I don't know. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. We've not seen the final of that. No, just doing a test of that. I don't know if it's on permanently now. Yeah, DW, you wouldn't like to see me on there. I wouldn't do well. (laughs) I've got the knowledge, but not the quickness. Couldn't. I think you'd do okay. I think you'd be good on it. You'd you'd surprise yourself. It's all about confidence, isn't it? Um. Yeah, I think we were we were trying not to be overly confident. Although we had a, we secretly thought we could do well, but it's who you come up against was the thing. Sometimes there's teams on there that there's no way we'd beat them. It's yeah. so quick and yeah. so good. Yeah. We've watched some teams on there that are just next level. I mean, I have fairly good knowledge. Tom is even better than me. And we thought we had a good chance, but it totally comes down to who you're up against. Um, um, James is asking, when was it on TV? It was on TV last night. So it is on the iPlayer now. Yeah, it's called The Hit List. Um, it's on the iPlayer. You can't um, miss it. It's got a picture of Nick and Tom on it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my face is on the, the little thumbnail. Oh, yeah. Tom says our competitors were lovely. Yeah. Well, it was nice because there's quite a lot of preamble where they um, they sort out your outfit and they do hair and makeup and all of that. And we had to watch video like explaining how the show works and what we can do and can't do and the kind of rules and regulations we had to sit through like this whole video presentation so that we had a chance to get to know the other contestants a little bit and we chatted more with the Irish um, brother and sister and they were lovely they really were they'd flown in for it and then were flying out I'm not even sure if it was the same day they were flying back um they'd come over from Ireland yeah, but they were lovely. Um, so Alistair said, I'm tuned into BBC One last night. It was like, it's Nick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, lots of people have had that moment. People that didn't know I was on. Susan says, yeah, a picture of Nick and Tom holding hands. I know. They picked one of us doing this awkward kind of <laughs> random clenching of hands. Yeah. Um, Chris G says, we Popmaster, an old friend of mine won Popmaster programme recently. Shout out to Vicky Richardson, scored over 80 in the knockout rounds. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. I've, I've never done the radio one. We've, we've sort of thought, oh, that would be fun. But it's so hit and miss with, with, what, with the questions you get on Popmaster. There's a lot of like... 60s stuff that I, I just don't know enough about yeah. and you I'd, can I'd come worried, unstuck I'd, yeah be worried that I would get if it was a 90s <laughs> quiz too many early ones I'd be there in a flash 
but but there's there's modern stuff where I struggle and there's early stuff where I struggle. 80s, 90s quiz, I'm all over it. We were chatting to friends up at the pub earlier, um, and they're into quizzing a lot. And we're gonna we're gonna have some quiz nights here. Um that, that's gonna be fun. Yeah. Stu's got a question. Oh. Has Nick now got a taste for TV shows? Pointless next or the chase? Please avoid naked, naked attraction, for God's sake. I can't watch that. No, you won't see me on that. Um, I, yeah, I think I have tried to apply for other stuff and never been selected. Yeah, you applied for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Yeah, yeah I didn't get anywhere with that. I'll see. But yeah, I'd enjoy going on Pointless. I enjoy, I like that show. I quite like the one where it's the um, uh, Tenable. I think we'd be good as a team. Is, is, is it Tenable where you have a whole oh, yeah. sofa of Yeah, you? you can take your family with you. You have like four <laughs> or five contestants on Tenable. That would be fun. We can pick and choose a dream team. As long as you get a, a board that you actually know something about. <laughs> Well, yeah, of course. Yes. <laughs> it's all luck of the draw. Sometimes you see them go up or they, they're kind of left till last and then they've got this board they have no clue about. Well, one episode of Tenable, the, the final round was Pet Shop Boys questions. It was Pet Shop Boys um, top 40 singles and then another round was um, Pet Shop Boys, the lyrics in Go West. Yeah, to pick oh, yeah. pointless lyrics. And I, I, I got pointless answers. I, got, I think I got two pointless answers from that question. And the singles, I think I got four pointless answers. I'd have won that one. But it all comes down to on the night. If you know it, you know it. It's easy if you know it. Shelley says, come on, Nick. It wasn't random. You two love holding hands. <laughs> Steady. <laughs> They should do what's that? Oh, look, talk... Chris B says, I'm sure Tom and Nick can hold hands and get a rewind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I'm going to scroll back a bit. Oh, somebody, somebody mentioned oh. the wheel. We enjoy the wheel. Oh, yeah, we love the wheel. But... Uh, DW, they should do an episode of the wheel with YouTube celebs. <laughs> there have been some YouTubers <laughs> on it, but fame, properly famous yeah, ones. Big, not big YouTubers, not like us. <laughs> not, not our tiny level of success on you. There's some big YouTubers who've been on there. Yeah. Um, but that's a great show. We enjoy that. Clever format. That oh, is. Chris G says, I had to explain to my wife who Nick was when she turned on the hit list. <laughs> the Nick Berry round. Yeah. <laughs> oh, know. yeah, you'd storm it. I'm not going on Love Island. I have never watched why, an episode. Why would Nick go on Naked Attraction or Love Island? I mean, hello. <laughs> but we've never watched an episode. Have you ever watched any of Love Island? I've never no, seen any of first of all, we're too old. <laughs> What to go on it for sure? <laughs> um, yeah, too old, not not good looking enough. It doesn't appeal to me in the slightest. Not you're not good looking, dear. But what? Um, <laughs> are you dissing me? Why? You don't look like a you know like a model like the, all the love on No, the, but the whole concept of that show, it just it just no, I can't watch it. I'd just be shouting at the telly. So, yeah. Uh, Big Brother House with UK resellers wow, in. Can you imagine the drama? Can you can imagine you it would all kick off? <laughs> Who would you get on? Who would you get on? Get Carla in there. We get on oh, with Carla. Yeah. That would be fine. Yeah, we'll be. We'll just hide behind Carla. Imagine. <laughs> and Lex. We'll get, let them, get George. We'll let them go out and. <laughs> George would be there. You know, a we'll youngster. Like <laughs> Who else could you have? I don't um, even know. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just so looking forward to the new Big Brother. It comes out, comes back later this year, doesn't it? What channel is it on now? Um, ITV2. Oh. We've had Channel 4, Channel 5, and now it's on ITV2. Hmm. Um, well, I touched on this a bit. Sorry if this is an old question. How long did the show take to film? I'm not really sure. It's all a blur, but it felt like hours we were in there. And, of course, there were breaks between rounds to well, go and get refreshed and go to the loo and there's a lot of kind of faff that of course you don't see you should say what time your call time was what time you had to get up that was you, early wasn't it, it? Was like was it seven quarter, quarter to seven or something we had an early call time that they film a couple of episodes a day if not three i think maybe it's just two it was still dark when you left and we we had to be um well we were picked up from the hotel yeah it was like seven or something silly um, I think you had to be at the studio for seven. They picked you up at quarter two. 
something like that. Yeah. So we had to kind of get our brains going that early, <laughs> which for me is a struggle. I'm not a morning person yeah. at all. But the adrenaline was, once that kicked yeah. in, we were on it. Well, we didn't see you until lunchtime, so it was a long time. But then I suppose there's time where you're having your makeup done. and There was a lot of fat All before. the prep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I say, that we had to go through the rules and regulations and how it all worked and all and, of that. And they tidied up your hair as well. Yeah, you know, we just had... shaved it all off. <laughs> she was like, "Do you want me to do anything?" <laughs> just... I'm like, "No, just, just just tidy it up." But but that's fine. Don't... And then yeah, and then we had like yeah makeup on, which was bizarre. But yeah, it was fun. Oh uh, no, we weren't allowed to. I'm answering this one. We weren't allowed to sit in the, there wasn't an audience because it's still COVID protocols. So me and Shelley just had to wait. So we went off around the charity shops. Although so, the, the, there wasn't an audience space in this studio. Off to the, in front of the stage, there was just a gap where the production team was standing and there was no gallery of seats. Because I, I remember going to the, the old original BBC studios up in London to watch um it was the what's his name um deal or no deal guy noel edmonds mm. the noel edmonds show whatever it was and we went up to watch that being filmed and they had of course a whole kind of stand of, of seats across from the where the studio was there was none of that there so i don't think it is even i remember the audience. very first um, series of the hit list and there was a very small audience because the they used to have a thing where the contestants would come on and they would walk through the people and yeah. they would like high five I guess like family members and friends would come with them and then that they would a lot of them were like you know JLS fans so they couldn't wait to have their hug quickly with Marvin before they <laughs> before they went to their podium and that's how it was in the first series well, and then, might... then COVID hit and it hasn't had an audience since. It may have been in that studio then. They've just taken down the seating bit. Yeah. Or it was filmed elsewhere. I've no idea. It was a sunken audience because they came across like a little bridge bit. I was just going to, I just highlighted Shelley's comment there. I think you were really nice to Nick, Andrea. And Nick, and Nick not being a morning person, wasn't really interested. Whereas Tom left me trying to stay, to stay asleep. <laughs> It was an early yeah, start. Yeah. Um, what's Lee saying? I got to the last 100 or so when I applied to be on The Apprentice 10 years ago. Oh. Interviews, group tasks, screen tests for eight hours with people dismissed at each round. In hindsight, in hindsight I dodged a bullet. Well, I'm uh, going to say something controversial here, Lee, but I think you were probably too intelligent. Oh, controversy. <laughs> Well, we had to do, going back to the process of applying for this, um, we had to, I sat here um, on a Zoom call with uh, one of the production assistants and um, we had, it was to kind of, I guess, see how we came across as a, as a, um, as a team and how we came across uh, on the screen. But also we, we had a quiz, they quizzed us, like a mini version of the hit list mm. to to see if we actually knew anything about music. Because you imagine getting three teams on who really didn't know their stuff. It would be terrible telly, not getting anything. So, yeah, I sat here and Tom was sat at his place. And I and we, sat at the table listening. You were sat over there <laughs> giggling at me. Yeah. yeah. But that was, yeah, it was fun. Tom said, I gave up taurine energy drinks in 2000. 2016 for health reasons, but made an exception, had a massive monster watermelon <laughs> fell off the wagon. And yeah, I imagine you needed it that, that morning. And yeah, I agree. Anything can happen is close enough to anything could happen. They should have given you that. I if the if it was the celebrity version, they would have given you that. Oh my god. Watch one of the celebrity ones. They give it if they get half the blooming thing. Like, and they're also giving them clues and helping them out. They were strict with us. And the stuff that was edited out where, the, where there was like kind of VAR going on. Oh, did he say such and such? I don't think I heard, you know. And there was great long gaps where Marvin and Michelle like receiving updates in their ears. Oh, oh, okay. We're going to have to replay the whole question, reset the points, blah, blah, blah. 
yeah they were they were tough on us <laughs> jamie says andrew get the bags packed you're going to florida it isn't florida i want to go to it's disneyland in california want to go to california even further away yeah well we went we there. only ever we went there once in the year in the year 2000 um when we were traveling around america and we went just for the day really and barely did anything and they hadn't built the second park at that point so that's what i really want to do it's the original disneyland so i want to go yeah. for my 50th and do something special we so yeah we were there it was the end of our road trip before we had Ellen, we we um went to america um and we hadn't planned a trip it was amazing looking back we just picked up a car at orlando airport and then bought a map and started driving we hadn't planned anything we hadn't planned any stops we didn't know where we were going we just bought a cheap map in a garage and said this will do us and we drove the entire length of the usa all we knew was we had a flight booked a month later to fly us back yeah. and we'd, we'd we'd done a hire car thing where we we were picking it up from orlando airport we were dropping it off at um was it lax yeah and um that was it everything in between we had a month and we hadn't planned a thing didn't know where we were going we knew we wanted i think all we knew was we wanted to go to the grand canyon we wanted to go, where else did we want to go? Um, San Francisco, I think, was a yeah. must. Although we chose the wrong weekend because it was um, spring break. Spring break, and we <laughs> couldn't get a hotel and we didn't manage to get to Alcatraz because it was all booked up. That's right. We wanted to do Alcatraz. We went there on spring break and it had been booked up for forever. We were like, oh. But we did do a bay cruise and we went under the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, that, that was, was awesome. Yeah, but we couldn't stay in, in San Francisco. We had no, to drive exactly. like half an hour out of town just to find a motel. Oh, we stayed in this motel in the middle of nowhere. Like, just there was nothing around us, it felt like. And, oh, apart from like a, a complex where there was a cinema and a Walmart and stuff. And um, we ended up going to see Mission Impossible. We did. It was so surreal. It was so sorry. I've no, I might watch, we should watch that film again because that'll take us back to that moment. I've never seen yeah. it again. Well, how many, the newest Mission Impossible's out now, isn't it? Yeah, Mission Impossible 23 and a half or something. <laughs> yeah, that was the first one. Was it the first one we watched? Maybe not. I don't know. It was uh, the year know. 2000. It might have been the second one. I think it might have been the second one. Yeah, yes, yeah. because you 2 did the theme tune mm -hmm. for the first one, I believe, and that would have been 95. Uh, yeah, Adam, so Clayton, three. Adam Clayton and Larry Mullen did the first Mission Impossible theme. Yeah. So, so I think it was, it was the second it was two one. Or three. We've gone off on a tangent. <laughs> um, um, Lee just put a comment in about the. Well, uh, it wasn't until after the interview process I realised they wanted cocky and controversial people that are good for TV. Hmm. I needed to be even, <laughs> even more of a lot together. You, you weren't a good. You weren't. <laughs> you weren't knobby enough. <laughs> Lee. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's this? Uh, Deborah, re-bargain hunt. The teams don't get just one hour. It took 20 minutes to film the deal handshake with me. Well, all TV shows are highly, highly edited. Yeah, me and Ellen went to watch, I don't know if anyone remembers the Sky show, Got to Dance, and we went to watch the filming of that. And that was really interesting because, you know, the edit is that they finish their dance and then they step to the front and they get critiqued. But there's a huge amount of faff that goes on in between mm -hmm. and they reset the stage and they have to get the microphone set up. And so they, the dancers go off for ages and then, you know, there's loads of faff that goes on. And you think that it just happens immediately when you're watching it yeah. on the telly. Well, TV is very much kind of the hurry up and wait thing. Film is even worse. Mm. The amount of faff that goes on in film to set everything up. Yeah, yeah but anyway. Yeah, um, I think I saw um, Martin, one of Martin Kemp's Insta stories and he was on a film set and he said, I've been doing films for many years now. And he said, um, and if I had any advice for actors, it's just be patient because I spend most of my time sitting around. Sitting around waiting. <laughs> I spend about, you know, about 20 minutes of the day acting. <laughs> the rest of yep. it, I just sit in my trailer. Um, 
I don't know quite what Kathy's saying. I here. know, it's a bit rude, really, Kathy. I was surprised, to be honest. I thought you'd gone past 50. That's outrageous. Look how young <laughs> I look. When I have the beard, I do look, it does put 10 years on me. That's what I'm sticking with. Yeah, you are looking um, a bit um, a bit like you've been living in the woods for a few months. I, I was looking feral <laughs> yesterday. So we arranged to get friends in. Um, from the village that we've got to know here to watch it with us. Otherwise, we would have been sat here on our own. So we, we had a really good night with friends. So I thought I'd better shave the beard off, make an effort. Um, we did. Well, actually, our neighbour, you were talking to our neighbour today and he said, you look a bit different, Nick, what is it? And he says, well, I've cut my hair and I've shaved my beard off. And he went, that's it. <laughs> he said, you look 10 years younger. <laughs> exactly. Um, did you get your kicks on Route 66? Yes, we travelled on Route 66 from Grand Canyon um, west. Um, and we found the coolest place. Do you remember we found this place where um, you went down an elevator shaft to an old to, mm. to caverns, Grand Canyon caverns, and yeah. there was still um, from the Cold War all of the like um, stuff they'd stored down there barrels full of food and that in yeah. case nuclear war kicked off it was there was so much stuff still there mm -hmm. from the 60s i'm thinking that yeah really cool and we went to the hoover dam as well oh yeah that was quite a place but yes we did drive along route 66 for some of the uh trip we were much more young free and adventurous um yeah we just got on a plane and went and <laughs> made it up as we went along. Yeah. We were a lot a lot more fearless back then. Well, we some days we just drove and got completely lost and didn't know where we were going to camp because we took a tent. Americans thought yeah. we were lunatics. We'd, <laughs> we'd turn up. We'd turn up to... The plan was where we could, we'd stay in state parks because mm. they were beautiful and it was, it was also cheaper. Mm. Um, we were doing this on a very tight budget. And we, we'd taken a two-man tent and it was like, you know, kind of throw on your back a little two-man tent. So we'd rock up to these state parks, put up this little dome tent and everybody else, everybody else was in massive Winnebago's with air con and all of this. And we'd get people coming across and, and at one place, yeah. they, they ran an extension lead and put a, put a little uh, fan in our tent because they were worried about us. It, yeah, it was a little air like conditioning unit actually. Yeah, so, yeah, because it, it said you. I, I just yeah, you're going to swelter in there. They can wrap their head. He wasn't it. wrong. He was. <laughs> it was. It was quite warm there. Um, but but they they come over. They were really chatty and fascinated. Oh, you're from you're from England. Blah blah blah. What, what are you also, doing? They all say, "Oh, I'm from England, but not really. But like, oh, my auntie is. You know, my grand great great grandma was." from England or, you know, they'd all go, oh, I've got British in me, yeah, or Irish or something, you know. Yes, we had some interesting <laughs> conversations. But, yeah, they couldn't wrap their heads around camping in a tent. We're like, we're camping. What, in a tent? You're going to sleep in that? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's not camping. This is camping, like 30-foot-long Winnie Bago. Uh, yeah. In hindsight, we were probably really stupid. Because, you know, most campsites had bears or crocodiles. <laughs> we, we escaped with our lives. Uh, Brummy Time Lord says, in 1981, we went to Disneyland in California, and I was the tender age of 12. Loved it. Oh, I imagine it being lovely in that 81. What's Shelley saying? She won? I won a competition with Take a Break. <coughs> Excuse me for a trip to San Fran, incredible. Stayed in a boutique hotel, spending money, and went to Alcatraz. Oh, awesome. <coughs> yeah, maybe one day we'll go back. My Sadly, one of my me overriding memories of, of San Francisco was driving there was a nightmare because it's all one way and it's so complicated. We didn't have any sat-nav, did we? And trying to get from A to B, if you don't know the city, and it's all one way, it was just taking us round and round, and we didn't know where we were going, did we? No. It was a, it was a nightmare to drive in. Um, yeah. oh, how was the jungle trail yesterday? 
It was a really good one, actually. Yeah, we had... Um, we had fun. It's about 60 stalls. We, and... we were going to one today, Ben, but um, I was slightly the worse for wear this morning. So when the alarm went off at eight or whatever, I was like, no, 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 we're going back to bed. Um, to be but fair, yeah. you didn't get out of bed. I did. And then I was like, no, I'm going back in. <laughs> yeah. Um, we would normally do a haul. Uh, we may do a separate video during the week and share some of the stuff. Yeah, I did film a little bit out and about. So I'll probably do a haul video and then put a bit of sourcing in it as well. Um, oh, Belinda did coast to coast. Look. Um, I went coast to coast, took us three and a half weeks, but it was in a coach and a different hotel every night. Still knackering though. Yeah, we had exactly a month and we, we drove it yeah. ourselves. In hindsight, we should have gone longer, like six weeks or something. Or... It was what we could but, afford on yeah, that budget, was. really, wasn't yeah. it? Um, and also we kind of, we went a lot quicker than we, because we, we, we had a date to fly back. So we had to be in LA by this date. So we could have taken more of our time. Mm. But by the time we got to the West Coast and then down to LA, we had like nearly a week left, did we? I think we did. Which was good because we, we were staying right on the coast outside of LA. We were staying in Malibu. We were camping in Malibu. Malibu. Which was lovely. That campsite was so nice. In a gorgeous little campsite in a ravine just over the the, the coastal highway. And there was a mm. surfer's beach there. It was cool. So we, we did have a nice time there. And then we'd drive into LA and we went and did sunset strip and yeah went to disney one day yeah, yeah it was good it was good uh, neil says tom being a frank skinner look-alike was as bad as some of my look-alikes on now that's what i call a live stream <laughs> yeah I, I can't really see it to be honest i think on the day i was like oh yeah i think what <laughs> really and the deal and skinner and the lightning seeds came up it did yeah I'd forgotten all about that sports round until we watched it back. <laughs> Excellent. How are we doing for time? Oh, we've got loads of time. So yes, so that was that was our trip to Scotland to film the hit list, and we can talk about it now. Finally, yeah. we can talk about it. Ben says, "Can you see yourselves living in America in the future?" Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. In I... word. We are we are very happy as to be as lovely as the country is, and I'm as you know, Americans themselves are you know are very wide and varied as as we are in the UK. But um, I, in terms of their well like the current politics and the way things are organised over there and what's going on in some states, no, would not want to live there <laughs> and i i would just miss the uk i'm i'm british through and through and i love living here um i don't think i could live in another country um so probably not emigrating anytime soon um yeah and, and just disclaimer our politics aren't as great now <laughs> very good either <laughs> so but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the way that certain states are. We won't get into it, but... I know. Certain, Don't go there. Certain Don't states run. are making laws that are um, against certain people's human rights and don't open that can of worms we, yeah we don't have to go down that road but i'm just clarifying what i'm meaning um neil are you still watching are you live tonight someone's asked um yeah i'll try and watch if you are um sorry if it's been mentioned when was it filmed um a few months ago in march uh we took a trip up to glasgow i'd not been to glasgow before we had visited Edinburgh and we actually stopped off at Edinburgh on the way home, which was lovely. We had a really good day, actually. Um, well, a few hours as it was. Um, and you went off charity shopping again, didn't you, with, with Shelley? And Tom and I kind of hiked <laughs> up to the pub. castle. <laughs> well, we, we popped up and had a look, look at the castle and then found a pub. <laughs> um, yeah, it was nice, actually, to chill out with Tom and kind of go over what had happened, what we'd experienced mm. that previous day, because it really was full on and so intense. I remember walking out of the BBC studios into the kind of bright lights again, because because it all happens. And then you have a kind of a brief kind of debriefing and then it's by then and they kind of shove you back out onto the streets. Give us your lanyard back and off you go. And then we're out there going, 
did that just happen? It was such a surreal, weird thing. Mm. And there we are wandering back to meet up with you guys. And we're both kind of just in shock at the whole thing. And that whole evening when we were out, we had moments where, did that happen? We won. <laughs> yeah, it was really odd. Well, Ben says, my brother lives in New Zealand and he said it's the best thing he's ever done. I would love to live there. Yeah, we've got friends in New Zealand. And um, yeah, well, my, my friend from teenage years uh, moved out there. She met someone and she absolutely loves it out there. Yeah, so, um, Nikki. Nikki. Yeah. Yeah, and if, hats off to you if if you know what you want and you and you find it. But I think we are we're quite homebodies, and I don't think leaving the country would suit us. We'd miss it too much. But never say never. Our, our opinions may change, but I doubt it. <laughs> Things do change. Um, oh, your everyday nerd says find anything good in the charity shops in Scotland. Most of them are really quite expensive, the ones we went to, because we were in the big cities. Um, but, yeah, I did pick up a couple of a couple of bits I've already sold and did a lot of right with. So. I can't remember what you bought. Um, Stool says, I couldn't be any later. <laughs> Hello, we're about to go. Um, just a reminder that next Sunday should be Auction Sunday. Yes. It is. Oh, no. I won't be here next Sunday. What? Why? I'm going to see the Hollywood Vampires. Oh, so what's happening? Are you going with Ellen now? Then? Possibly, I think because. Well, I could run it on it my is, own. Yeah. Could, what, could I? What's going on? <laughs> could I? I mean, we may have to delay it. Yeah. Thanks for reminding us. We had actually <laughs> thought through this, and then you've only just tweaked. Yeah. So you'll be where are you going? Where are you seeing them? London. Oh, two. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I might, I might go I might live be. and we'll just do something else. I might be meeting Ellen there. If not, you might be coming with me, so I'm not sure. <laughs> right, watch this space. Yeah. We'll, we'll put an update out during the week and let you know what's happening. But we may delay the auction a week then. Because either both of us aren't here or you're not here. And normally you keep track of all the payments and yeah. all of that whilst I'm... Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Stephen, for reminding us. Not sure. Jeff, I'm not sure how much help Jeff would be. <laughs> yeah, we do have a couple of cool things to go in the auction, though, don't we? We found some interesting bits to put in. Um, yeah, so either next week or maybe the following week, we will do the next live auction. Um, oh, Ben saying about, oh, OK, the parcel, yes. Yeah. Emo, yeah. yeah. Our post is weird at the moment. We don't have our um, regular postman. We're not quite sure whether he's just gone or whether he's on holiday or what. I don't know. But we seem to have postmen that aren't postmen. They're not like in a uniform <laughs> or anything. And sometimes they turn up in a post office van. Sometimes they just turn up in an ordinary van. And post comes at all kinds of times of the day. So I was a bit annoyed the other day because I missed... I missed two parcels, um, I think it was while we were away in Brighton, and it said we'll try and deliver on the next, you know, the next day. Um, so they tried to deliver Monday, then said we'll deliver Tuesday, and then missed it again because I wasn't around. And then I waited all the day of the next day thinking, because they said we'll deliver next day, and they never came. No. It never came, and I waited all blooming day. Well, we had it good. It was so annoying. Our original postie used to come round the back, let himself in our backyard, and put put post in our woodshed, so we wouldn't even have to get up and answer the door. He just he just put parcels around the back. I know. It was but lovely. The, the new ones don't know this is fine to do, so they they leave a note, and they were like, "Oh, he missed him again." Yeah, I don't even leave it with a neighbour. They just mm. <laughs> they just put a note through the door and say, I'll try and deliver tomorrow. So whether they're they're waiting to get a full-time replacement, it's just temps. Oh. I don't know. So Shelley said some of the post office stuff is being done by temps, apparently. And my posties reckon they don't know what they're doing. No, I don't think they do. Well, it's also well, something yeah, similar, using lots of agency. Either. The other the added problem, the added complication here, I was chatting with my neighbour about it earlier. 
virtually every house in this village has a name, not a number. So it, it takes a poster years to know the route. We get Amazon delivery drivers coming around and they walk up to you and you go, do you know where Squirrel Cottage is? I'm like, no. He's like, oh, nothing's numbered, so they can't work it out. That's a nightmare, you know, because we don't have a number. We are just the old post office. And next door is Dragon Cottage, for example. Over there, you've got Dove Cottage. And there, you've got the old bakery. No numbers. So, yeah, the amount of confused Amazon drivers we see on a daily basis is hilarious. Must take them forever. To be fair, um, the core Hollywood vampires are all legends, aren't they, really? I mean, you've got Joe Perry, who's just one of the greatest guitarists ever. So, um, Welcome to the new improved Royal Mail. Is that what it is? Um, oh, Steve doing a bit of... Um, uh, now, what is that lyric? That is oh. divine comedy, isn't it? She said, there's something in the wood. Oh, I'm singing now. <laughs> Divine comedy? Anyway. Um, right, should we do some words of wisdom? It's all Your everyday nerd said, I had, Where? I had a human walk in my house with the post. I was very confused. I'm confused by <laughs> what you're calling. Wasn't a dog then. Was, was the food. door open and they just came in? I'm not sure what that's all about. So we normally end these with words of wisdom. I can see one oh. com coming in already. Um, treasure trove, words of wisdom. A good postie is worth his or her weight in gold. I would agree, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah, we used to have a lovely one back in Hitchin and I think he'd left, didn't he, eventually? Because it changed. Do you remember we used to have one who was always very happy and accommodating and helpful? Did you yes. tune me out then? No, I was just reading um, Cherry Potato Joyce's um, coin there. Um, yeah, we had a lovely postman in Hitchin, didn't we? Mm. I felt bad because I didn't tell him we were moving. <laughs> we just kind of disappeared. Yeah, Neil's right. What three words would, would help with not knowing which cottage is which because they're just named? Yeah. I wonder if they're going to incorporate that technology. Neil, are you going live tonight? Um, I don't know if you answered the question. I haven't seen the answer. Might have done. Yeah, so um, Cherry says, a post a post you knocked on the door the other day as it put our neighbour's post to the door, at least you noticed. Yeah, at least you did. Um, in Nerland's house, where she lives <coughs> in her student house, they get quite a lot of mail for people that lived there over the years. And um, there was a parcel there the other day where, where, when we went to visit her and you noticed it. And it had been there for ages, apparently. Well, let me interject. Okay. My job, whenever I go to see Ellen now, is to <laughs> sort out this pile of mail that none of the students ever deal with. It's all for ex-students or ex-residents of this house, which is now a student house. Pile of it this big, right? So I do not at this address, return to sender on all of it. And then there was a parcel which had just been delivered to the wrong address, completely wrong address, not someone who doesn't live there anymore. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll just put it back in the post and then they'll deliver it to the right address. It was the same street and number, but different postcode. So I don't know what was going on. Anyway, by the time we visited Brighton again, it had come back. <laughs> and I thought, okay, so this is just going to go round and round and round. There was no return address on it, so I just opened it. Yeah, I thought, this, this is just going to keep coming back. It, it was a pair of jeans. But Ellen said it had been there for months. <laughs> So they probably got their refund for it. I'm sure. But that, that's my job. When I go to see Ellen, I do admin. <laughs> really uh, oh, here's, here's Tom with his, his no music knowledge. Something for the weekend. <laughs> oh, what's the one that was really catchy around 97? Oh, uh, the National Express. That's a good song. Oh, yeah. Words of wisdom. <laughs> keep I am easy. never going to live that down no between the two of us we couldn't get to bronsky p oh i like this one oh life isn't tied for the bow but it's still a gift absolutely when words fail music speaks there's a there's a brilliant lyric by martin gore of depeche mode if life were a bought thing 
there are ways I'm sure we'd change. He's a poet, is our Martin Gore. Go on. Before entering a quiz show, ask yourself, where is my mind? Wasn't that in a, a title of something that was on there? That was the Pixies one yeah. that we couldn't get to. <laughs> yeah. But it all worked out, right? We came away and we won the show. We couldn't have even really, you know, of course we hoped, but we couldn't have dared imagine that we'd A, win it and take away that much cash. It was... No. no. If you I haven't mean, watched it, I won't spoil the ending, but we did okay. We did okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, yeah, we, we obviously really hoped, but didn't, didn't ever think that maybe. Yeah, it, it, it was could. tempting to let yourself go there, but it's like, oh, I don't want to, don't want to yeah. imagine it. We, we were so, just thrilled to have been accepted onto the show. The, the, the fact the, that you, you did. Because it's, it's one of our favourite TV shows, same with Tom. And to, to just be accepted onto it was was a win in itself. So Absolutely. We, we dared let ourselves go to, oh, yeah, because can we win? Can we win? Yeah, thousands win. of people applied for it. And you were, you know, you got on it. So amazing. So the fact that we came away winning it was just mind-blowing. still is. Yeah. Um, Neil says, no live streams at the moment as work is manic at the moment. Okay. Um, here's Rachel, um, Marcus and Rachel. Um do or do not, there is no try. So do or do not, there is no try. That was bad, sorry. It was terrible. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Um, Name a Gamer says, worrying won't stop the bad stuff from happening. It just stops you from enjoying the good. Yes. You I need know. to I know. take that on board. I'm, I'm a worry wart. Um, Christina says, if money doesn't grow on trees, why do banks have branches? <laughs> I've never heard that. That's genius. <laughs> Will says, don't get your communards and your Bronski beets mixed Oh, up. let it go. <laughs> Actually, th this one is quite quite poignant because banks are closing all their branches oh, around are. here. It's, yeah, yeah, don't get me started. Um, my posty wears a, a bandana. He looks like Axel Rose. Um, what's a, a few of my... Cells, what cells, don't know, got lost. They all turned That's out that the postie left sold. it with a neighbour's or a safe place, but without any notes. Well, how are you supposed to know? That's ridiculous. Um, Chris G, word of wisdom, thought is often bolder than speech. Well, wow, that's deep. It probably is, because quite often, you, you know, people are generally... Don't say everything they're thinking, do they? True. Um, <laughs> don't leave us this way. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, did you have to split the winnings, Nick? Or was it, it was, yeah, you split it. Either way, as Della Rodney would say, we've had worse days. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it was the icing on the cake to come away with that. And, and yes, we, we just split the money down the middle. It was, yeah. That was always the way we planned it. The po oh, Tom's words of wisdom. The poetic justice of cause and effect, respect, love, compassion. This is my church. Oh, this, this is God is a DJ. <laughs> this is my church. I'm not saying it in the same way. This is where I heal my hurts for tonight. God is a DJ for tonight. God is a DJ. This is my church. Rest in peace, Maxi Jazz. Yeah. Yeah. Poignant stuff. Um James, I always had faith in you when I saw it was a music quiz show. Yeah, we we had we dared to think we might be able to do well, and we we came through somehow. Yeah, you were gutted you didn't get any depression mode questions. Well, there was a DM question. Yeah, but it wasn't yours. It wasn't aired either. Um, but um, I did get it. Yeah, home is not a home without a Westie. Oh. Um. Chris G, youth is a blunder, manhood a struggle, old age a regret. Oh, blimey, that's quite dark. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it light, folks. Uh, short, funny clips. If a toilet appears in your dream, do not use it. <laughs> I see where you're going with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That, would, that means something, doesn't it? Because funnily enough, it's one of my recurring dreams. I dream about 
toilets either <laughs> where, where are you going do you want to think through this before you share either needing one but when you get there there are no doors or anything has anyone ever had this dream it's, it's a classic dream that if you you need the toilet but when you go to find one it's either out in the open or it's in a public place where people are walking through or there are no doors there's no privacy you might be sharing some deep stuff about your psyche here yeah <laughs> Okay. Yes. RIP Max Jazz. Thank you, Tom. Um, okay. Shall we pick one? Um, they seem to have dried up coming in. I so... think Tom needs to have the have the words of wisdom this this week because it's fitting. What, the lyrics. Yeah. There we go. We'll give that to you, Tom. Um, and thanks again for because you know it was your well it's actually your daughters who were egging you on to apply. So thanks to them for making it all happen. Um, yeah, it's something we will never forget. We'll never have the chance to do again. So yeah, it was awesome. And we got to share it with friends and all you guys who've watched it. If you haven't watched it yet, it's on the BBC iPlayer. Sorry if we've kind of spoilt it a bit for you. Um, but it is a, it's a funny watch. <laughs> Especially the yeah. dad dancing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Stor says, Words of wisdom, don't share your dreams live. <laughs> but she Cherry knows what I'm talking about. Oh. Um, and Kathy says, dreaming of needing the loo is very common. <laughs> Times I wake up. Yeah, I think it's more than that, actually. Um... Well, Belinda dreamt about what? Hang on, it's just gone off screen. Oh, sorry. I was, I once dreamt I was using a toilet in the middle of Asda Cafe. I don't think I've ever dreamt about using a toilet. Oh, Darren Hutchings said, I sent you the Erasure Flexi. Sorry about Nick Berry. Oh, it was Darren. Okay. Yes, we <laughs> shared it earlier. I don't know if you were in. Thank you. The, the Erasure Flexi is the coolest thing. But you needn't have bothered with the Nick Berry. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Yeah, I don't know if you were in earlier, but we did share yes. it. Yes. Cherry, you're right. It says the walls are never co covering long enough to cover the loo so everyone can see. It's something to do with feeling exposed or feeling like you don't have enough time to yourself or feeling like um, you need more privacy in your life or something like that. It's, oh, it's something like that. I've looked it up. Deep. Right. I'm glad we've worked out who sent it. Thank you, Darren. I really appreciate the thought. Uh, and it's coolest item ever nick berry not so much lou lane says just watched you and your mate on bbc iplayer you guys were great well done thank you lou right i think we're going to leave you there so we're not sure what the plan is for next week um regarding the auction almost certainly we're going to postpone that for a week um i don't know if we're both going to the hollywood vampires next week or whether i will be here if i'm here on my own i'll probably go live uh might see if somebody wants to come on and chat with me or something yeah. if we both go we won't be here so we can't go live um but yeah thank you all for joining us thanks for your comments um yeah i hope you enjoyed watching the show if you haven't watched it it is on iplayer look it up um hopefully you'll enjoy it and we may see you next week we're not sure watch this space <laughs> yeah okay yeah are we done? I think we are. Yes. Have a good week, everyone. Yep. If you enjoyed it, please uh, whack the like button on the way out and we'll see you. There should be some more video content coming on the channel next week. You, have you put a video out on your channel yet? Not yet, but there will be one coming because I'm going to do a haul for Jumble Trail stuff um, with a little it. bit of sourcing footage in it. As well. Right. You heard it here. You've got to do it now. I, I know. Ta-ra! <laughs> Bye! Bye.